and joy, and let's bring our hands as we welcome everyone. Say hello.
teachers, for our teachers, administrators, administrators, bus drivers, bus drivers, uh, crossing guards, <laughs> lunch people, lunch people, <laughs> custodians, custodians, and everyone, and everyone involved with the school. Involved with the school. May we be a blessing. May we be a blessing to you. And to others. And to others. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. 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 All right. Have an awesome school year this year. Are you excited? Sam, I'm not really. I know that. Too. All right. I'm going to send you out for uh, Children's Church. So head on out for Children's Church. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, for helping to, to be a part of that. I invite you to bow your heads and fold your hands as we continue in an attitude of prayer. There's not a plant or flower below, but makes thy glories known, and clouds arise and tempests blow by order of thy throne. Who then is this that even wind and sea obey you? Be still, my soul. Your God will undertake to guide the future as he has the past. Your hope, your confidence, let nothing shake. And now mysterious shall be bright at last. Be still, my soul. The waves and winds still know thy, his voice who ruled them while he dwelt alone. O oh Lord, the suffering in the world is so widespread and the pain is so great. Have mercy and awaken the souls of suffering millions to the hope of some relief now and unsurpassed joy in the age to come. Send your church, O oh God, with relief and with the word of the gospel that there is forgiveness of sins through faith in Christ and that no suffering here is worth comparing to the glory that will be revealed to the children of God. Protect your church, Father, from callous thoughts about calamities that leave millions destitute. And protect her also from cowing to critics like Job's wife, who cannot trust the wisdom and power and goodness of Christ in the midst of inexplicable misery. Oh, help our unbelief. Incline our hearts to your word and to its assurances that you work all things according to the counsel of your will, and that no purpose of yours can be thwarted, and that you are doing good and acting wisely in ways that we cannot now even dream. Keep us in peace, O Lord, and forbid that we murmur and complain. Grant us humble and submissive hearts under your mighty hand. Teach us to wait and watch for your final and holy purposes in all things. Grant that we would rejoice in hope even when present circumstances bring us to tears. Open the eyes of our heart to see the greatness of our inheritance in Christ and send us with tender hands to touch with mercy the miseries of the world. And in Jesus' name, we continue to pray as he taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Our first reading of scripture comes from the Psalms. We'll be reading from Psalm 145, verses 13 through 21 from the New International Version. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, 
and your domain endures through all generations. The Lord is trustworthy in all he promises and faithful in all he does. The Lord upholds all who fall and lifts up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you, and you give them their food at the proper time. You open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and faithful in all he does. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love him, but the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak in praise of the Lord. Let every creature praise his holy name forever and ever. The second reading comes from Hebrews chapter 10, verses 22 through 25, and again, from the New International Version. Let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswaveringly to the hope we profess, and he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. And God add his blessing to his word. One thing I forgot to do and give the kids during the uh, backpack blessing, my mind just totally left me because we've got a little uh, carbiner form in the shape of a fish. The ichthus says a reminder, it's the symbol of Christ. And they can hook this onto their bag and it can be a tangible reminder of God's presence with them. And it's also an opportunity if someone sees it and says, hey, what's that? They can say, hey, Jesus is with me. So would you be able to take these back uh, to the kids back there for me? Thank you very much. I'll put that one in there and then just bring the basket back when you're done. Thank you. Doesn't like sending somebody on a mission during church, amen? <laughs> Well, there was a new police recruit that was taking his final examination, and he was a little nervous about this. So he had this uh, last test to go through. And the sergeant said, all right, son, he said, here's your question. This is either going to make you pass or fail. He said, your mother-in-law breaks the law, and it's a violation that requires her to be arrested. So you see her? What do you do? And the young recruit, without missing a beat, said, you call for backup. <laughs> I don't know his mother-in-law, so I imagine, but maybe someone else here can testify, don't put your hand up. <laughs> they may be here. <laughs> we all need help from time to time, right? We all can use a little help, and there's moments in our lives where we can we can uh, reach that point where we say, yeah, I need some help with this. Anybody here have a, a GPS in their car? I mean, if you've got a smartphone, you've got a GPS. Those things are awesome. They are great for helping you navigate. They've helped me to find where many of you folks are living. And uh, especially on this road that I'm still trying to figure out the name for, it's called Dogtown. And <laughs> I still haven't quite figured out Dogtown Road yet. But... <laughs> Uh, that's pretty cool, but GPS's are awesome little devices, but you know what the thing is I found personally that there are times when a GPS will take me down a road that I just don't want to go or a direction or to a, a place that I, I really didn't want to get there and it's, it's kind of crazy. True story, a couple of years ago uh, a woman literally drove off the edge of a cliff following her GPS, the, the, the route kept saying, turn to the right. Well, turning to the right meant you'd go off the edge of the cliff. And she was just paying attention to it. She's looking and she went right over the edge of the cliff. 
I don't know what happened to her. I didn't hear the rest of the story. But, you know, there's times in our lives that we may wind up going to places we don't want to go. And having that place in our life. I think for Garmin, probably their tagline should be like the Dr. Seuss book. All the places you will go. <laughs> and I think that's true in our lives. All the places you will go. Every one of us has an opportunity to go to places that are might not be on the map, might not be plugged into our GPS. Even though I have GPS and I have it on my phone and, and that's a great thing, what I've found over the years, GPS has never been able to guide me through those scary moments of life, through those difficult, challenging moments of life. Have you ever struggled with something? Have you ever struggled through something that was really hard? Think about that for a minute. What was it? What was it that you struggled through? What did you learn from that struggle? Or even maybe better yet, a question is, are you still in that struggle? Is that struggle still a part of your daily life? What did God show you in that struggle? How did you get through it? How did you get through that struggle? What is your go-to place to find answers? What is your go-to place when you, when you are in the midst of a problem or a struggle or you're questioning things? Where's your go-to place to get answers? <coughs> Oftentimes, people go to the same place they've always found answers for because it is things that they have learned from and they have developed in their life. And it's the kind of their supply closet or a backpack, in a sense, kind of in a way, that they can open up, reach in, and take out what is necessary or what they need or a portion of that, of that answer to help them to get through. But the question I would even ask then, if you have that go-to place, and every one of us does, when you do go there, have you ever found its supply empty? Have you ever found its shelves vacant? Have you ever opened up that, that supply backpack and looked inside and found it empty? And the question is, if it was empty, then why do we go back and hoping to have it filled up again? Maybe magically it's filled up again. Or what are you doing? What's on your, your grocery list to put back to resupply that closet so, or that place so that you, when you go there, you'll find the supplies you need? The question I would probably ask you is what is in your backpack? Now, I got mine on today, of course, because we're doing the backpack blessing and all that. But what are, even better, this is a better question. How much does your life weigh? Now, I'm not talking about getting on the scale and looking at it. You know, I, I got, we got one of those talking scales at home, and you get on it. And I got on it the other day, and it says, please, one at a time. <laughs> like that, you know. <laughs> but, you know, I, I understand. But how much does your life weigh? Now, what I would like you to do is to imagine you have a backpack. And what I want you to do is put some stuff in that backpack. And here's what I want you to put into that backpack. First of all, I want you to put the things that are important to you, like pictures, okay, or put in some collectibles and sacred things, things that, you know, that are important to you and that you've collected over the years or whatever, mementos and uh, meaningful things. Put those in there. And next thing I want you to do is start putting a little bit more. Put in like your tabletop appliances that you really, you know, you, you think are important. You know, how many would say your coffee maker is probably the most valuable? Yeah, amen. Look at, we got a lot of sweets in this building. <laughs> I had that over there in, in Altona and Oneida. I mean, they, they literally lived on coffee. It was just amazing. Put that in the backpack. 
Maybe it is coffee you would put in there and stuff. Keep adding to it. Now, now start to put in the stuff like furniture. Your bed and your, your television and your, your you know, stuff around the house. Now it's, notice it's starting to get heavier. Are you noticing that? It's getting heavier. Now put in some more. Put in like your house, your property, farm. Maybe you've got that. Put that in there. Now, you've put all of that stuff in there. Try to walk. It's pretty heavy, isn't it? It's pretty loaded down. What I want you to do with that backpack, with all of that stuff in this area, let's say I set it on fire. What do you grab first? What are you going for first? What do you, what do you try to take out? Pictures? You know, i got to have those out because I can't remember. Well, you know, that's fine, but let's, let's just do what I would say. Just let it burn. Let the whole thing burn. Let it all burn up. There's nothing left. Nothing but a a pile of ash. You've left, you're left with nothing. Now, aren't I a ball of encouragement this morning? <laughs> I mean, you're just feeling good. You're going to walk out of the church. Wow, that was awesome. <laughs> but you got nothing. Now, let's play the whole scenario over again. You got a backpack. Only this time, you don't put in stuff. You put in people. Put in your immediate family. You know, put in if you got children, put in your children. Your spouse. Yeah, I know you might not want them to go in there, but put them in. Put in your spouse. Your grandparents. Yeah, your mother-in-law too. <laughs> put them in. Now put in those acquaintances that you know, your neighbors. That person across the street that mows their yard on the day you don't want them to mow it. That person at the grocery store that irritates you. That guy in front of you, put him in there. The one that, that cut you off on the way to work. Just keep putting in people that you know. People that you, you like, you don't like. It's pretty heavy, isn't it? It's still really, really heavy trying to walk and trying to carry that. But I think what Jesus wants us to know is that we don't carry that burden alone. Matter of fact, here's what Jesus says. You can follow along there on the screen as well. It says, for my yoke is easy and my burden is what? Light. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. You see, Jesus wants to help you carry those people. He wants you to carry those people in your life. And he knows our heart is kind of like a backpack. It's a container. It's a place where we fill all kinds of things in our life. We fill it with all kinds of things. We fill it with, with pains and with sorrows. We fill it with joys and, and happiness. And within our heart, we have this rhythm, this beat that's going on. And it expresses to us and to the world what's really happening in our lives, what's going on in our lives. You ever been to the doctor before? I'm sure you have. You're all here healthy and walking, right? Amen? You all know what one of these are, right? These are pretty cool. You can use them to listen to your heart and so forth. Well, I'm kind of curious today... What's in some people's hearts? So I want to kind of go around and listen to a few people. So Dr. Dave is in the house. <laughs> but don't start singing Dr. Mario. So I want to kind of go around and listen. I think I'll start right here. This guy looks like. Hey, it's okay, Gary. Gary. All right. Let's listen to what's in Gary's heart. <laughs> Funky beat going on, you know? You had Taco Bell for breakfast, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, let's look around here. Let's see here. 
who else do we got that I would like to, to see? Help me out here. I need a second person to look at. And that guy right there, yeah, yeah. I know I had someone chose, and I'm trying to remember who my second person is. <laughs> who did I pick for number two? Well, I will just randomly choose someone else for number two. Oh, there he is. Okay, let's see who number two. Hey, <laughs> Terry. <laughs> Can we hear what's on your heart? Oh, yeah. Gotcha. Oh, wow. Well, that's exactly what happens. 
In Psalm 145, we heard how God watches over us and is with us always. And Psalm 145 is a reminder that God's presence is with us always, and that he cares for us, he supplies our needs. In Hebrews, we read how we are to meet together and continue in that and encourage one another with love, that we will spur, as the scripture said, spur on one another towards love and to encourage one another with that love. So, what does it mean to take God with us by putting more people in our lives? Well, it simply comes down to this. God helps us to encourage one another, to love one another. When we see the people that are in our lives, and when we see people, actually it boils down to this, everyone that we see should remind us of God. Anybody here know anybody that could use some prayer? Yeah. When we see that person, we should be reminded that God answers prayer and that God is faithful and just to remove anything that's in their lives or to help them through that. When we see people, anybody here know anybody that's angry? Somebody wake up Steve. So uh, <laughs> the crickets are still going. Anybody here know anybody that's angry or upset? Yeah. That person should remind us that God can bring peace to their life. Do we know anybody that's joyful? Amen. <laughs> Amen. We should see that as an opportunity to know the joy of the Lord as our strength. You see, the more people that are involved in our lives, the more opportunity we have to pray. And believe me, there's some people that will increase your prayer life. Amen? Amen. <laughs> there are some people that we know when you get more people in your life, you know that you'll have more people praying for And there's power in prayer. Amen? There's power in prayer. And when we band together and pray together, there's, it is just unstoppable. When we have more people in our lives and we see those angry people, it gives us opportunity to share love with them, to share God's peace. And so if you want to take God with you, put more people where? In your life. Put more people in your life. In the book, All the Places You Will Go. Anybody here read that book before? One of my favorites. Favorite Dr. Seuss book. I'm just going to give you a little excerpt from it. Because I believe this is a, a, a vision of the places God will take us. You see, when you put God in your life and you take God in your life, all oh, the places you will go, it says. All oh, the places you will go. You will be on your way up. You'll be seeing great sights. You'll join the high flyers who soar to high heights. You won't lag behind because you'll have the speed. You'll pass the whole gang. You'll soon take the lead. Wherever you fly, you'll be the best of the best. Wherever you go, you will be top of all the rest. Except when you don't, because sometimes you won't. I'm sorry to say, but sadly it's true, that bang-ups and hang-ups can happen to you. Can I get an amen to that? <laughs> And that happens. Our lives can be filled with hang-ups and bang-ups and good days and bad and those moments in between. But the places we will go, we can go with God. So let me end it this way. Anybody here want to grow in prayer? Anybody here want to increase their prayer life? Put more people in your life. Anybody here want to grow deeper in the Word of God? Put more people in your life. When you put more people in your life, your prayer life will increase. When you put more people in your life, they will share scripture with you and you can share scripture with them. They will encourage you and they will invite you to be a part of what they are doing and it will give you opportunity to share that. Anybody want to be more obedient to God? You know how you do that? What do you do? You put more people in your life because they will set the example for you of how to be godly. And they will sometimes show you what it's like to not be godly so you can know how to live and know what's right and what's wrong. Amen? So you want to take God with you? Put more people in your life. You want to take God with you? 
Do you want to take God with you? So, when we do that, we are blessed. All right. As the band comes back on up, um, I'm going to show you. I think you're probably, I'm kind of curious what's in my backpack because it is kind of heavy. And, it, and I'm curious what's in there. Let me see here. Oh, just one thing. Wait down here at the bottom. Oh. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I knew I forgot something. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> oh, offering time. <laughs> Yeah. 
our hope. That God is with us always. To know Him more, to love Him more, and to take Him with us is an opportunity as He invites us to be a part of what He is doing. So let's go. There's a whole world out there with its hang ups and bang ups and ins and outs and ups and downs. Let's go and live as God has called us to live and make the most of every day. Amen?